Hello, I'm David Wasson with CAPS, manufacturer of the Herc 30-ton air-cooled water chiller with integrated pump. This short video will outline the setup, startup, and operation of the air-cooled chiller. On the 30-ton chiller, to transport it, you have two options. One is the forklift pockets here at the bottom of the skid. The second is overhead lifting and stacking is available as well with this cage. You can do a single point lift here in the middle and you'll notice the center of gravity is marked on each skid. Also, please note that when you're transporting the chiller to verify the weight of the machine here so that you're using the proper forklift truck or crane to mobilize the chiller. 30-ton chiller has been placed in its final location on a firm level surface. You next want to verify what the required power is to operate the machine and its pump. That information is located here on the CAPS data tag. This particular unit requires 78 amps minimum circuit ampacity or a 90 amp breaker connection. Please note that all the CAPS chillers have integrated breakers for both the chiller and the pump. The next step in our setup is going to be to connect the high voltage 480 volt 3 phase to the machine. This is done by simply removing the cam lock protecting dust and weather caps from both L1, 2, and 3. Make sure that you are wearing the appropriate PPE for handling the electrical. The first cam that gets connected is going to be the ground. The ground is always connected first, followed by the remaining color sequence for L1, 2, and 3. After we've connected the power, the next step we're going to have is going to be to, to verify that if the phase rotation is correct on the machine. We've completed hooking up our cam lock cables. We've removed our lockout tag out from our power source, which could be house power or a generator. Now we're going to energize the chiller main breaker to verify we have power and to check rotation. Go ahead and energize. Now you notice that we have our power light on here. But we also have a phase incorrect light. That indicates that two of our phases here are reversed. We first got to now to open the breaker on the chiller. Then we're going to go and kill our main power source, lock it out, tag it out, and we're going to have to re reverse two of the cables here. Please note that you never change the, the cam lock cables while they are energized. Due to the phase incorrect, we've changed two of the phases on the incoming power. We've removed our lock and tag out from our power source. Now we're going to energize the main chiller breaker. Now we have a power light and the phase incorrect light is now turned off. The next step we're going to do is just simply turn the system switch to on. What that allows is what's noted here in this red tag. The unit is equipped with a lockout timer. 480 volt should be applied to this at least one hour before the startup. The lockout tap timer allows the compressor oil to be warmed up, and this is the first step in our setup. So while we're hooking up the water and filling the system, the chiller can continue to warm to be ready so the compressors are started properly. Please note that any time the power is disconnected from the generator or the house, or if someone turns the system switch off, that resets the one-hour lockout timer. The next step in our setup is going to be to hook up our main water lines. That's the inlet and outlet. That's accomplished by these four inch Dixon QC connections. Please note the female is direction of flow. So we're going to have a male hose going to the female and the male coming off the chiller will be our supply. This is simply done by making up, make sure the gasket's good, lock down both of the lock rings on it and ensure that the hose is not in a bind or have uh, any stress on it. Uh, we also have temperature indications in and out, manual gauges, as well as the ones on the microprocessor. Okay, we have our hoses hooked up. Next thing we've got to do is we've got to fill the system with bottled water. So we've got a fill valve here at the, at the bottom and also a drain. The fill valve is the one with the check valve on it. Willie's going to hook up the main uh, bottled water feed here. While he's hooking that up, let's go over a couple of specialties. First item we have here is an inline strainer. That's there in order to catch any sediment or debris that might be in the water. As it's coming in, filled down, and we have a blowdown here, so any debris gets in, you can simply open this valve up and blow the trash out. We've got a couple of pressure gauges here for in and outlet pressure, as well as another pressure gauge here for our split across our heat exchanger. We've got low water drains at the bottom for winterization and more we decommission the chiller. 
We've got our hose hooked up now. We'll open up the valve and start filling the system up with water. While we're here, we've got the, our integrated uh, chillers. Our pump uh, have an integrated bypass on the, uh, on the pump. So we have a choice of utilizing the pump of the, that's built into the chiller itself to circulate the water. Or if the project requires uh, for us not to use our pump, we have a built-in bypass. It's very simple to set up this. You have two valve positions. This is the bypass. It's closed. If we're going to use the pump, we just simply open the valve here. That sets us up for us to circulate through our pump and through the system that we're, we're providing the cold water to. If we're not going to use the pump, we simply close that valve and open up the, the bypass valve there and then use the system pump and it'll push through the chiller and heat exchanger. We'll let the system fill up and our next step is going to be to get the air out and as we continue our startup process. Okay, we've used our fresh water filled. We've got our system filled up to about 40 PSI. That can range from 40 to 50. That's fine, good starting point for us. We're going to be using our inboard pump in this installation. So we have our isolation valve in the back here completely open, and we have our outboard uh, discharge valve completely open. You can always note the PSI that we have the system filled up. Both gauges indicate 40 PSI. We don't have our pump running. So our next step is we filled the system up pressurized. We've got to get the air out. Remember on these air-cooled chillers, they're, they're cooling water. You don't want to have any air out. The first step is going to be right here is a T-valve at the pump fitting. Simply going to open that up and you can see we've got air and water. You hear it coming out. And what you're going to do is you're going to run that until it gets a steady stream of water coming out with no air in the system. We also have a fairly large high bleed point valve on the other end of the 30-ton chiller. You'll also open up that valve in this process. Once you get a good stream of water coming out both the pump and at the high bleed point, you're in a position to get ready to start the pump. Please note that the, the differential pressure switch is right here, which has two braided lines. That verifies that we have flow across our heat exchanger to ensure that we have an accurate operation and no failure codes. We've, we've repressurized the system with the air that was lost out of the volute. Now we've come down to the high point bleed, which is clearly marked here. Just simply going to open the valve up and see we've got air there. There again, you cannot have air in the chill water system, so we need to bleed this out until all of the, the air is out of the system. Once all the air is out of the system, we'll be ready to start the pump. Okay, we've bled all the air out of the pump and our high point bleed. We've also checked our air handler. All the air will always go up to the top. We've got all the air out of the system. We've refilled it, repressurized it to about 40 PSI. We're now ready to start our pump. Just for, uh, the pump off the switch here, we're going to turn the main breaker on. Then we're going to come to our pump switch here and just simply turn it on. So now the pump is energized and circulating. Please note that you can never get the air out of the system unless the pump is off. So if you turn the pump off, all the bubbles that are in the system will fall and go to the high points and you can go around one more time to check and make sure all of the air is out of the system. Once you can get nothing but water, you're good to go in permanent operation and start the chiller up. Okay, to recap the 30-ton uh, air-cooled chiller, we first started out with checking the power requirements and verifying that we had enough power source for the machine. We set it low level and on a stable surface. We connected our hoses, our hydronic hoses, to our air handler, our pump, and our chiller. We filled the system with water, and we went through a process of bleeding all the air out of the system. We've got the pump now circulating, so at this point we're ready to start the chiller. I no longer need my high voltage gloves, as the, the control panels are low voltage and can be operated just from this simple display. Machine is set up and ready to go. I'm simply just going to turn the switch to the on position here, and then we're going to go through a, a, the, the different uh, menus and set points. This is the main chiller processor control panel. We're going to review over what each of the buttons are, as it's very simple to operate. You can push any button on here, and it's not going to foul anything up. So always remember to push the status button. The status button here will tell you what exactly is going on with the chiller. And this one simply says unit off 
on shutdown system switch, which is right here. It's in the off position. The operator data is just that. It's data. It tells you what the chiller is doing, refrigerant pressure, temperatures, etc. Print button is if you hook a printer up, you can produce a report. History, anytime there's a fault or an alarm, it's logged in the history bu button. Set points is exactly what it says. We have to set the water temperature and set points, and that's where it's done here. Schedule advance day. Think of that as an on-off time clock, much like a thermostat at your home. Program button is in integrated programming that we set up in, in, the, in the factory. Options allows you to turn the systems on, off, language, or different types of modes. And then the clock button is just simply for setting the time and dates in the chiller, which comes pre-programmed from GAPS. So to get started, the first thing you want to do is go into the, set, the, the options button, push it one time, and the enter or advance button allows you to do uh, either enter a value or advance to the next menu. First thing that comes up is display language, which is English. That's fine. We'll advance. The next one is probably the most important menu selection. It says system uh, one uh, switch off and system two switch off. What we want to do is change that value by just simply moving the arrows up and down so we can turn system one on and two off, two on and, and one off, or push it again. We want to turn both systems on. Or you can push it again and turn both systems off. It's a software way of turning the compressors on and off. Typically, we'll shut the machines down by turning both system switches off. Now that we're done, we push the enter button, and that burns it in. The chiller is set up for, uh, for leaving uh, chilled water operation, which allows temperatures down to 40 degrees without the introduction of glycol. So I'm now finished with that. I'm going to push my status switch, and it's still shut down on switch here. The next thing that I've got to do is just put a set point in, and it'll default to the last set point on the last project or when the machine was ran last. This particular chiller is set at 44 degrees. I want to lower this one uh, down to 42 degrees, so I just simply run the arrows down to 42, and then I push enter, and then I go back to my status button. So we've, we've got the system switches on. We've set our set point. At this point, we want the machine to come on and start making cold water which is what we're uh, in the purpose of the machine. Simply just got to turn the switch to on here, and we've got the, switch, the, uh, the timer timing out. Okay, the next thing to do is just simply turn the switch on. Now the compressor has started. And notice that it says system one, compressor running one, system two is any recycle timer. That's all normal. As a chiller, we'll always start with the least number of compressors and start staging up. At this point, you can push the operator data here button, and you'll notice you'll see the leaving chilled liquid temperature and the return chilled liquid temperature. It's at 77 uh, leaving and at 78 coming back. So as the machine sees that set point at 42 and the water temperature at 78, it's going to continue to turn compressors on until it reaches its set point. Then at that time, it'll turn the compressors off and stage accordingly.